I recently posted a video on the disassembly and uh, trigger job of this little Taurus small frame revolver here, which is identical to a uh, Smith & Wesson J frame. Um, and I wanted to uh, make a video uh, showing the internal mechanisms and how everything works inside one of these double single action revolvers because they are fascinating and a lot of moving parts are packed into this little frame and I think it's a really, really cool uh, mechanical system and pretty much all double single action revolvers. Modern ones are going to operate in the same way. Their springs may look a little bit different here or there, um, but they're all going to have similar double action, single action transfer bar safety and cylinder um, latching, unlatching, and rotating mechanisms. Uh, so let's get the side plate of this thing off and take a look in there. The cylinder is retained in two ways. There's a spring-loaded plunger on the back here. There's also another little um, spring-loaded detent right here, which engages with that notch right there in the front. You can see this groove right here is going to push this detent in until it gets to this hole. And then the detent will spring back into that hole and that's now in contact with this plunger right here, which is attached to your cylinder release. Push the cylinder release forward. It pushes that plunger in at the center of the cylinder, and then the cylinder can swing out. The cylinder movement when pulling the trigger or cocking the hammer is controlled by two components. This is the cylinder lock right here, and this is the hand. And first we will take a look at the cylinder lock. So whether you pull the trigger or pull the hammer back, the same thing is going to happen. The trigger initially pulls the cylinder lock down, which unlocks the cylinder. Now it can rotate. And then you'll see the trigger gets to a certain point where the cylinder lock moves past it. And now this spring right here is pushing the cylinder lock back up into the bottom of the cylinder to catch the next one of these notches that spins around. At the same time, the cylinder lock is latching and unlatching. The hand right here, which is attached to the trigger directly, is moving up and rotating the cylinder into the next position. And of course, the hand, we can see it come through the back of the frame here and move and what that is interacting with is these little uh, teeth on the cylinder that will make it spin. Let's take a look at what happens in here in single action firing mode which is where you would pull the hammer to the rear and then pull the trigger. And of course you can see the hammer spring being compressed on the hammer strut right here. You can also see that this little um, arm that is attached to this pivot point of the trigger has pushed this housing back, compressing the trigger return spring. And then the actual sear interface is right here. So that right there is the trigger and that right there is the hammer. And then when you pull the trigger, it releases the hammer. In double action mode, which is where you pull the trigger to the rear, it cocks the hammer and then 
drops it. We will focus in on this area right here. You can see this hook of the trigger is between this part of the hammer and this little lever, which is pinned into the hammer. And then there's another little hook on the trigger down here. So keep an eye on both of these. This hook right here is gonna do the first part of the motion and then it will slip out from under this lever and this hook right here is gonna catch the bottom side of the hammer and continue the motion until the hammer is released. So there we see the lever and hammer being lifted up. Okay, at this point, this hook has let go of this lever and now this little hook right down here is on the bottom of our hammer pulling it further back and then releasing it. So after a double action pull or a single action pull, the hammer has dropped, the round has been fired, and now it's time to reset the trigger. Let's take a look at what happens as this trigger resets. So you can see our hand is all the way up and it's already rotated the cylinder. You can also see the hook right there that grabbed onto this lever. So as the trigger comes down, our hand is going to ratchet over the next notch on the cylinder. And you can see it's also gonna push this lever out of the way on the hammer so it can get back under it. And at the same time, you just saw the hand settle in under the next notch on the cylinder. take a look right here and see how our cylinder latch operates. Right now my cylinder is locked. The cylinder lock is up into the bottom of one of these notches. So as we release the trigger, you can see that our trigger pushes the cylinder lock back out of the way on this slotted hole right here but at no point does this unlock the cylinder during the reset. And then it pops back into place, allowing it to be pulled down, unlatching and then relatching before the trigger. The last mechanism in here to talk about is a transfer bar safety. This is the transfer bar and it comes down here and pins into the back side of this trigger opposite of the pin for the hand right here. And you can see right now with the hammer down, this is the hammer and my firing pin right there is not actually being contacted by the hammer. So that means it is safe to carry a round in the chamber that is lined up with the barrel and the hammer and there is no risk that if you drop the gun or hit the hammer it will set a round off. Now we can see there's no physical contact between the hammer and the firing pin right now but when you cock the hammer or pull the trigger to the rear you can see the transfer bar slide up and now the transfer bar is contacting the back of the firing pin. So now when the trigger is pulled, the hammer will come forward and it will hit the transfer bar, which will transfer its motion to the firing pin to the case and uh, fire the round. And then when I reset the trigger, you can see that the transfer bar safety slides back down out of the way. And you can see it come up here in double action and you can see it come up here in single action when I cock the hammer. So that means this gun is only capable of firing when the trigger is pulled to the rear, which is a great safety feature. All modern revolvers have a transfer bar safety in some form or another. Let's take a look at the overall action in single action. Let's look at all the functions in double action.